to all listeners. I'm sure many of you have pondered in the past to try to understand the strange phenomenon that seems to repeat itself every single year on the first night of Yom Kippur. Klal Yisrael b'chal mekoi mois moishvei seyem after benching Birch HaSamozen at the Suda Samaf Sekes, they go ahead and bench their children and then they hurry to fill the shuls, the botik and the siyos, the botik and the and the atmosphere in the shuls is charged with emotion, is charged with some spiritual energy. And we all come to shul, we put on the kittle, we put on the talus, and the women in the Ezra snoshim, and we're ready to usher in the holiest day of the year. Then the Baltfilla goes to the Ahmed in the famous melodious tune, he starts saying the Kol Nidre. And at that point of time, we feel inside us something stirring, something's happening. Many times it's accompanied with tears streaking down, streaming down our cheeks. As we get emotional, we become passionate. We feel something's happening and we can't put our finger on it, what exactly is taking place? What am I feeling? What's going on inside me? And the question begs an answer. The tefillah of Kol Nidre is not as if we are begging and beseeching the Ebershter for a good year. We don't say a word in the Kol Nidre that Hashem Yisbarach should inscribe us in the Sefer HaChayim, not at all. Kol Nidre on the surface, externally, looks like a simple act of nullifying vows, nullifying the Dorim. Kol Nidre ve'esare, the Asarna al nafshasana kuloin yehein shoroin. It shall be nullified and then we make a declaration. Mi'oim kipurim ze'ad, yoim kipurim abalein letoivar. Why is this a place to get emotional? Why is this a time to feel uplifted? And then after we finish the Kol Nidre three times, we all say, V'nislach l'chal adas b'nei Yisrael u'leger agar b'soycha m'kilachal ha'am b'shkoga. We tell the Ebishter, B'moychal our averis, forgive us, don't hold this against us. And then we cry out. Then we go and we recite the Shechiyonu. What's the continuation? After nullifying the Nadorim, we ask Abishta for forgiveness. And then we say the Brocha Shechiyonu, the Kimonu, the Giyonu, the in order to understand what transpires on that holy night, let's go back to understand what is the day of Yom Kippurim. How do we define the holiest day of the year? What's it all about and how does it work? There's a Medrash Rabba in Pasha's Toldois. When the Psukim tell us that Yaakov Avinu wanted to go into his father's inner chamber, Yitzchak Avinu, to get the brachas, and Yaakov said to his mother, Rivka, I'm nervous to do this. My father, Yitzchak, will figure out that I am not Esau and I am not the son that he planned to give the brachas to. As the Pasuk reads, Vayoyme Yaakov Rivka Imoy, Hein Esau Achi Ish Seir. Esav has a lot of hair. Va'anoichi ish chalak. I'm somebody that has no hair at all. Says the Medrash. Reb Levi Oma Moshul Lekavots Vekireach. 
there was two people. One man that was bold and one man that was very hairy. Both of them were standing at the edge of the goiren where they thresh the wheat. And all of a sudden the wind came, blew up all that chaff, and it went into the hair of the kavots. And he got tangled into his hair. The chaff also went onto the head of the bold individual standing there. And all he did was, he put his hand on his forehead and he cleaned off all that chaff. Continues the Medrash. Kach. Esav HaRosha, who is the Ish Seir, who has a lot of hair. He soils himself with Averas the entire year. And he can't find a solution to atone his Averas. Because he is like the moits being the stabech besari, the chaff in his hair, impossible to get out. But Yankov the Ishcholok, although throughout the year he also soils himself with averas, with sins, but nevertheless, Ibo Yom Kippurim, the day of Yom Kippur comes, he has a way how to cleanse himself from all those averas, Shanema. What does this Madrash mean? Esau doesn't have a Yom Kippur because Esau is hairy. Yaakov has a Yom Kippur because he has no hair. What can be the understanding of such a Madrash? Yaakov doesn't have hair, so he can have a Yom Kippurim. Esau has hair, he has no Yom Kippurim. The chaff gets tangled into the hair of Esau, not in the hair of Yaakov. What could be the inner meaning? And what does this do for us? The Heilige Maral Miprag, once in a Shabbat Shuvud Russia, said the following explanation. He enlightened us with a deeper insight in this Medrash which gives us another understanding of the unbelievable gift called Yom Kippurim. Said the Meral Miprag, let's analyze the Moshal. Why is it that when you have a man that has a lot of hair and that chaff goes into the hair, he has a hard time removing it. And a man that has no hair has a simple time to Get rid of that chaff. And the answer is, because if you have hair, then that chaff that enters your hair is going to become so entangled and so part of your hair that it's virtually going to be impossible to remove it. You'd have to take a lot of time and patience to comb out one hair after the other and there'll still be leftovers that stay attached to the hair. But a man that has no hair Although the chaff is on his head, but nevertheless, it's not entangled. It doesn't become one with him. And therefore, in a simple act of putting his hand over his head, he can easily and simply remove all that chaff and he can become as clean as he was before this experience. Says the Meral Miprak. The Medrash is telling us there's a fundamental difference between an Avera that Esau does and an Avera that Yankov does. When Esau does an Avera, that Avera is becoming part and parcel of his very essence. That Avera attaches itself to that Goy that does it. That Avera gets tangled into that person and it's very, very difficult to remove the hate from the doer. Masha'enken Yankov Avinu Yankov Ish Cholok. Yankov is so holy and so sublime. 
Yaakov is so spiritual that even when he sins and does Averas, those Averas can never, ever become part and parcel of his very essence. The Avera can't attach itself to a yid. Superficially, of course, on his head, those Averas can be sitting. But it's not as if they became connected to the yid. Yisrael Ava Pishachato Yisrael Hu. He always remains with that neshama, tahira, chatsuva, mitachas, kisei akovoit. And therefore, for the Yid to do tshuva is extremely simple. He just has to get his hand and remove those averas that never became part of him. When does this become revealed? When do we become aware that the Averas, that Chas Shalom we have, don't reflect on our essence. That takes place on the awesome day of Yom HaKippurim. Yom HaKippurim is a day that the Ebrishter Bechastoy HaGadol gave us in his infinite kindness. On that day, a person can disassociate himself from those Averas and he'll begin to realize that him and his Averis have nothing in common. And with a simple act of bending over and saying al chait, he can just remove all those Averis and he can become clean. Ketinig ben yoimoi. Ki bayoim hazeh yechaper aleichem letahireschem. It's a day of ultimate purification. We can become clean and rid ourselves from all the nonsense and all the darkness and all the wrongdoings that you didn't have committed throughout the year when we began to realize that Averas are not us and we are not those Averas. Allow me to read out a line in the Sfasemes in Tafresh Memtes. What's Yom HaKippurim? Perish, Sheboy Mitzkale Tzior Hapnimi Shalish Yisrael. The Tzior Hapnimi of Elish Yisrael becomes revealed. On the day of Yom Kippurim, it becomes Niskale, who we are, what we are. We are people of spirit, not people of body. We are people that are connected, Lamailo, not people that can get pulled down Lamata. And as Hashem says, that's the reason why we don't eat or drink on Yom HaKippurim, because it's a day of the spirit. It becomes niskala to every person. That his very essence has nothing to do with this mundane world that we find ourselves in, on the country. We are pneumious digger people. We are holy people. We are people that are connected to the Abishta. And therefore, it's a day of kapara. It's the day of Tahara. Sasamis in another place tells us something even more revealing. If you want to define in one word, what is Yom Kippur? What happens Yom Kippur? In one word, says Sasamis, that word is Amos, the truth comes to the forefront. And he says, we say in the Piyut, in the Sana Toikif, On Rosh Hashanah, the Ebeshter writes, what's going to happen in the coming year? On Yom Kippur, the Ebeshter signs, Yom Kippur is a day of Hasima. What's the concept of signing? If you have a document that hasn't been signed, then you can be very wary about the truth and the authenticity of this document. If you have a check that's not signed, it doesn't mean anything. Who said it's true? Maybe it's forged. Chasima means to establish that this is a fact. Yom Kippur is a day of chasima. It's a day of ultimate and absolute truth. 
And when it's revealed that Amos, then this comes to light. In the world of Shekhi, we can think that we are people of body. In the world of Shekhi, we can think that when we do our veras, it becomes nistabach, it becomes entangled in us. But when the day of Yom Kippur comes, the day of Amos, then we see who we are, what we are, what we possess, and where we belong. That is the gift of Yom Kippurim. I once saw from the Leif Simcha. He said, You make Shechayonu Yom Kippur by night. What's that Shechayonu all about? So he said the following thought. We know when we find a fruit that we haven't seen in a year, we haven't tasted it, we haven't seen it, we obligate it, we make a bracha, Shechayonu v'kiyemonu v'giyonu l'azman hazeh. Yom Kippur by night. We enter into the shul. We are finding something new. That something new is ourselves. We are finding new Yidin. Every person himself begins to realize and recognize who he thought he was yesterday wasn't true. That wasn't Emes. That was Chitzonius. That was superficial. That was external. You come Yom Kippur and a person says, I never knew this is who I am. I never realized that I am so holy and so spiritual. I never realized that sin and me have nothing in common and I can just rid myself of all those averas. So we say, Shechionu v'kiyemonu v'giyonu. For the first time in a year, I'm meeting my true self. Ki b'yoyim azeh yechaper aleichem letar eschem. What does this have to do with Konidri? Listen to this, Moira Baraboisai, a pshat that I once heard. The Gemara tells us in Mesechtas Nedarim Daf Samach Vav the following story. Maisa Bechot. There was a story with one man, Shenadar mi bas achoisai hano. Though this man that made a nether, he promised that he will have nothing to do with his niece. She was brought in to the house of the Heilige Taner Rabbi Shmuel, and he beautified this girl. He made her dress the way a Basis Rol is supposed to dress. He made sure that she shouldn't have all the uncleanliness that she had previously. Amalai Rabbi Shmuel, then Rabbi Shmuel turned to this man, and he says, Bni Mizumi Nodarta. When you made the nether, that you are to have nothing to do with your niece. Did you have in mind somebody that looks like this? Amaloy Lav. No. The niece that I made a nether about looked totally different. Then she was filthy, then she was unclean, then she was ugly. That's the niece. I wanted to disassociate myself from. This niece, I never made a nether. To be also banal on her. Vetira Rabbi Shmuel says, Rabbi Shmuel, if so, your nether has been nullified. Mutalach, mutalach, mutalach. Shah. At that hour, Bacha Rabbi Shmuel. Rabbi Shmuel began to cry. Vama, Benois Yisrael, Nois Hain. The daughters of Klal Yisrael are beautiful in their premiers. El It's only because of the situation that we find ourselves that the girls are so poor that makes them externally look ugly. But the truth of the matter is, but no Yisrael, no Yisrael. And if that man, that uncle would have known how truly beautiful his niece is, he would have never made a nether. Mutalach, mutalach, mutalach. Had gesagt der Slalom Rebbe Schlitter. It comes Rosh Hashanah. We all stand in front of the Ebishter. Kol bo oilam oivrim lefonov kivnei moroin. And the Ebishter inscribes us in the book that he sees fit. 
What type of year we should have? What type of year we shouldn't have? As we say in the Saratoykev, mi bechayim, mi the opposite, mi anuach, mi anua, mi aosha, mi aani. That's Rosh Hashanah. When it comes leil yoim akipurim, when Klad Yisrael enter into the botek in his yoisi botek medroshos, and they began to realize that they aren't the same people that they thought they were yesterday. In this day of Pneumius, in this day of Neshama, in this day of Emes, and we enter into the shul, and we began to connect to the Hebrister in a way that we couldn't have done yesterday or the day before. On Yom Kippurim, the hearts of Kladis Rola opens, and the Neshama becomes revealed. Then we say, I call Nidre, we tell the Hebrister, Whatever you wrote on Rosh Hashanah is not relevant, Kavayachal. Because we tell the Abish that that was for me, that was Rosh Hashanah type of me. But on Yom Kippur, it becomes revealed a new individual, a new reality. And we tell the Abish that, Bani Mizum Nadarta, did you have in mind this person that's coming into the Shul Yom Kippur? And the Abish says, Lav. This is not the same person. This is somebody totally different. Loi Mizuyu Nadarta. This is not the person that I inscribed in a book in Rosh Hashanah. He deserves now to be written in the Sefer Hachayim. He deserves to be written in the Sefer Oisher, in the Sefer Amachas. We conclude the Kalnidri and we tell the Ebishta. After showing our true colors, after revealing to you who we are, then we say, If so, it doesn't take much to remove our sins and our imperfections. Whatever we did, because it wasn't us, we would never sin. We would never do anything against your rotten. And then we conclude, True. What you're saying is 100% accurate. I know how special you are and how dedicated you are to fulfill my will. And you understand and appreciate that you are a chelek elekai mimal. And there we go ahead and we proclaim and we thank the Ebishta. Baruch ata Hashem elekeinu melech oilam. We are born anew. We are finding ourselves in a way that we haven't found ourselves since last year, Yom Kippur. Let me conclude with one short story. A marshal I once heard, I think, for a Melech Biedemann Schlitter. There was once this man that lived in a broken down shack. And all he had was one socket to plug in whatever he had to plug in. So when they had to make bread in the toaster oven, then that socket would be used for the toaster oven. Then when they wanted to do laundry, they would plug in the washing machine into that plug, and so on and so forth. One day, this man was walking down the street, and he saw a sign. They were selling lottery tickets, and the prize has got to be that he's got to get from the king a machine that you can plug it into your socket in your house and you can print as much money as you want for 24 hours straight. He thought, after all, my accommodations aren't that great. I have a lot of bills to pay. Maybe it's worthwhile investment. So he went ahead and he bought a ticket. Lo and behold, he won this prize. He gets the ticket. He runs to the office, he says, yes, sure, the numbers match. Okay, let's give you the machine. They gave you this machine and they said to him, you have it for 24 hours. You can do whatever you want in this 24 hours. Use it as, as much as you want, because after 24 hours, we're coming to pick it up. He comes home and he tells his wife and his kids, I need the socket 
We have to plug this in immediately. Every second's a waste. So they said to him, what are you talking about? We need to make some bread. We have to do some laundry. He said, if you don't understand, bread and laundry you can make the next day. I only have this for 24 hours. Every note that I'm going to print is going to help us. I don't have a minute to spare. And he pulls out every plug that was in that socket and he plugs in this money-making machine for the next 24 hours. It comes the day of Yom Kippur. The day that they to hear how it fills because Korva Hashem Lechal Koyrov Lechol Sheikru Be'emes. In the day of Emes, the Nebuchadnezzar listens to how it fills. It's a day of connecting to the Nebuchadnezzar. It's the day that we can be zoichet to Madregas Ramos to Kaporas Avoynos, and every single second of this day is so valuable. And every second of this day is a once a year opportunity. And sometimes we get sidetracked during the day with this and that the other. We have to understand, we have to unplug everything else and plug ourselves in for 24 hours. Then be zoichem yit Hashem in this year to gemach asim atoyver to shnas guna vi Yeshua and we zoichem together with Gans Klad Yisrael to go abimakabu p'nei Mashiach tzidkenu b'meheira b'yameinu amen va'amen.